So Essex won the toss and chose to field in this huge game for them. And Surrey as well, much riding on it. They're desperate for a home draw on Thursday when the quarters kick in. Will Jacks and Laurie Evans, as ever, began in a hurry. Jason Roy lurking at number three, but it was the old guard of these two, Will Jacks and Laurie Evans initially. Early flurry of boundary fours before Laurie Evans was the first to go, picking up Aaron Beard and a tidy catch by Dan Lawrence at deep backward square. Laurie Evans just going for nine from 11. And it brought Jason Roy to the crease to join Will Jacks. Jacks demonstrating his power and class with a couple of enormous sixes. It was Jacks who got into his work initially and then Jason Roy returning to the side after that calf injury sustained in the warm up to the first game of Surrey's T20 campaign, reminding the punters exactly what an incredible talent he is. Just as Will Jacks was getting going into his work, 23 from 13, Sam Cook, who'd gone the distance, cleaned him up with a beautiful slower ball, back of the hand, in the block hole. Will Jacks playing over the top of it. It was a much needed wicket for Essex at the time. Jason Roy, meanwhile, just went about his business happily, getting back into form. Sam Curran joined him at four, didn't really get going this afternoon and perished for just three. Simon Harmer picking up the wicket. Pretty straightforward catch for Daniel Sams at deep mid-wicket. And when Sam Curran went, Essex were doing it pretty well. 64 for three, Surrey were in the eighth. But all it did was bring the great Sun Una Ryan to the crease. He's simmered and threatened with the bat through this tournament, but this was the statement knock of his campaign so far. full of class and invention and impudence. That reverse sweep set six was really out of the top draw. And just as Jason Roy was really settling in on 28, Shane Snater's medium pace managed to induce the edge and it was well taken at the second attempt by Adam Rossington standing up. Sunderland Ryan, meanwhile, was really opening those, sh those shoulders of his. He would hit seven boundary fours in his 78. Jamie Overton joined him in good form and contributed a couple of hefty blows himself. He made 23, including these two sixes from the same over of Daniel Sams. In the end, it would be Paul Walter who takes the wicket of Jamie Overton. Just couldn't quite get enough of it, aiming for that shortish mid-wicket boundary. And it was a good catch because it was a steepler. Daniel Sams under the high ball. Southern Ryan, meanwhile, simply went about his business. He was unstoppable in those final overs. Anything in the slot was deposited for four or six. Seven boundary fours and six maximums in the end. Tom Curran's flurry, 12 from 10, came to an end rather unfortunately, bringing Daniel Sams his solitary wicket. And Sun and Ryan in the final over had some fun. Sixth and final six. And then from the very final delivery of the innings, moving across his stumps. A missed chance and that runs away for four. Surrey, 195 for six. Essex needing 196 to win and to stay in the tournament. Essex were chasing 196 to win. It was a tough ask at the start. And that tough ask became even harder with Adam Rossington going to the second ball of their reply. Sam Curran just holding, holding it back a little bit. And Jason Roy returning to the side having injured himself in the warm-up of their first game in this tournament, taking an easy catch at mid-on. After that, Daniel Lawrence, Surrey bound from next year, of course, and Michael Pepper, a fine young player that is very highly rated by the Essex hierarchy, got together and put on an absolute clinic. 
Some of the cleanest hitting we've seen in the tournament so far. Michael Pepper really got things going. Almost obliterated the sight screen at one point. Dan Lawrence took a little bit longer to get going from his end. But he treated the patrons of South London to some miraculous work. They'll be enjoying Dan Lawrence's skills and talents next year in a Surrey shirt. But in the meantime, he had a job to do for Essex and he did it very effectively and classily indeed. They put on in all 140 in just 11.3 overs. It was spectacular. They shared nine sixes and 11 boundary fours between them. Michael Pepper brought up his 50 and then moved serenely on through the gears, finally perishing for 75. Some of the cleanest hitting we've seen. And it was an important knock, not just for the individual, but in the context of Essex's season, they'd lost four coming in here, four on the spin. They desperately needed a win to keep themselves alive in this tournament. Daniel Lawrence, meanwhile, was as impish and as impudent and as creative as we've come to expect. Lawrence's 50, yet again, just came up in just 29 deliveries. And that extra cover six from the bowling of the great Sun and Orion, perhaps the shot of the day. At one point, it looked like Essex were absolutely cruising. Not a care in the world. Lawrence, having broken the back of the run chase on 58, skewed Narayan up to Sam Curran. Essex were on 140 in the 12th at that point. But there is a soft underbelly in Essex's middle order in this tournament so far, and it was rather exposed as the pressure got to them. Michael Pepper went for 75. No blame attached to him. It was an excellent knock that really got Essex into the ascendancy. Chris Jordan, who's probably the pick of Surrey's bowlers, picked up his first and only wicket. Craig, uh, Jamie Overton doing the business at deep mid-wicket. Paul Walter, an injudicious shot in truth to give Gus Atkinson his only wicket. Walter went for three from seven. And at this point, Essex was just starting to wobble the pressure of the occasion and what was at stake, the chance of a top four finish at a quarter final weighed heavily on their middle order. And Matt Critchley, rather panicked, ran himself out for four from eight deliveries. Jason Roy, who was excellent in the field on his return, affecting two runouts and a couple of catches. Daniel Sams, Essex's finisher, came in clubbed his second delivery for six and at that moment we thought that the run chase had been essentially iced but not to be from the very next delivery that Daniel Sams faced he perished Jason Roy's second catch of the day on the 45 and suddenly Essex was six down for 179 and they still needed 17 from two and a half overs Simon Harmer, the skipper, came in with a point to prove. He was all business. Meanwhile, at the other end, Feroz Kushi was doing some sensible work, playing within himself. And it was Harmer who called himself through for that second run. And although it was tight and Harmer was frustrated with the decision, replay suggested that the umpire got it absolutely spot on. Essex were really wobbling at this point. 188 for seven. But this was the moment. Final delivery, three needed. A boundary four was going to be the only answer. For Rose Cushy climbs into the short one. The longest boundary here at the Keir Oval. And Chris Jordan's magnificent effort and athleticism couldn't quite deliver. The flick back over the shoulder landed outside the perimeter and Jamie Overton who was waiting for that return catch could only see the ball land on the floor 
Surrey will wait to find out who they play, but they will be packing their bags and travelling away. Essex live to fight another day.